Uh, hi, um, I am Nicolas Milojevic Dupont. I'm a PhD student at the Mercator Research Institute on Global Commons and Climate Change and at the Technical University in Berlin. Um, and I'm very happy to present um, today our current work on mapping 200 million European buildings in 2.5D to support policy making. Um, this is joint work with uh, Felix Wagner, who's uh, co leading this project, and a great international team. Um, so today I will uh, walk you through the motivation of this project, its concept, um, and the different steps um, to get to the, the, the final data products, which are identifying which uh, available open data uh, we, um, one can find, and uh, parsing and harmonizing this data, inferring missing value in the data with machine learning, and uh, last some discussion. So uh, to start with the motivation, um, we need geospatial building data to support uh, various policies that have to do with transforming cities from their current states to what's needed um, to address um, different societal problems. So um, uh, geospatial uh, building data means that um, buildings are represented as special objects that can be located in space. So at the minimum, we have uh, um, some GPS coordinates, just one point, and here for this um, uh, database, what we're interested in is, is a polygon that represents the footprint uh, of, of the building um, and geospatial data on building can get much more complex. You, you can have 3D models, but here we're just interested in um, footprints together with some attributes that give uh, more information about the building. Uh, for example, the type of age and um, that not only enable to locate the building, but and able to, to get further information on what kind of buildings um, one has here on the map. So uh, with such information, there are uh, plenty of use cases that are described uh, on this um, uh, figure. And, uh, and in general, um, yeah, this, this, this relate to uh, environmental and, and social problems that uh, require policy. Um, so the, the example, I'm um, going a bit more in depth here is climate change mitigation and adaptation, uh, which is the motivation why we uh, built this database uh, in the first place. Uh, and, uh, but this database it can also be useful for, for other uh, purposes. And so in the, in the case of climate change uh, mitigation, we need to have a full uh, view on the building stock to understand how to decarbonize it. So how to reduce um, the energy use and the, uh, and the GHG emission uh, associated to the current building stock to uh, mitigate climate change. And we also need to understand better uh, which part of the building stock are at risk um, of uh, the, the different climate risks that, uh, that will happen with um, global warming, for example, extreme climate events. So um, to, to address these issues, the, there are certain data needs that, that we know. So we. Uh, we really need to uh, full coverage of building footprints to be able to locate all buildings. Uh, we need to have a, a certain set of attributes that will describe further um, buildings. We also need to have large scale harmonized data to be able to compare cities. So to understand how different, uh, uh, how different is the building stock across, across cities and if we can come up with scalable solution that work for different cities. Um, and additionally, what we are not able, so all these um, uh, three dimensions we are trying to address in this project. For climate change mitigation adaptation, we would also like to have historical data to follow urbanization patterns and uh, link um, buildings with other data layers, so for example, streets or other type of land uses. Those two aspects uh, we are not addressing in this, pro in pro in this project, but also very important. So this is what we need. Um, but um, currently the data that we have on buildings um, are incomplete and fragmented uh, and don't, do not offer um, a full view on, on the current building stock. So this is a map from a recent paper that's um, uh, submitted on an archive if you're interested um, that uh, makes an inventory globally on uh, available open government data. And you can see that there are many data sets in some regions uh, as Europe or North America, uh, but also some regions where there are very few of them. 
Um, so this this gives you a, an idea of how incomplete the, the, the space is at the moment. And you can see that there are many individual data sets, which, um, which makes it difficult uh, to uh, compare uh, data without um, putting all these data together in one single database. And there is one single big database worldwide that um, has a lot of um, building data and that's OpenStreetMap. But you can see um, in this table, uh, which represents for the European Union, the percentage of uh, the, the con each country's building stock that is available in OpenStreetMap. And you can see that unfortunately for many countries, the data is quite incomplete. So OpenStreetMap also doesn't uh, at the moment offer a full view on, on the building stock of the European Union and also other regions. Um, so this is where our concept um, comes in. And so what we're aiming to do in this project is to provide a database of buildings in one and 2.5D uh, harmonized across all, across all the European Union. So 2.5D means that we uh, are interested in the footprint of the building and also we had some information about the third dimension, the height, as uh, one attribute value. So um, we're interested in all these uh, 27 countries in the European Union, and uh, we were able to uh, gather more than 200 million buildings, which represent more or less 80% of um, the European building stock. The, this uh, data, again, is uh, vectorial data. So these are polygons of each uh, individual building footprint that represent uh, um, rows in our database. We're interested in three main attributes, which are height, type, and age, because th those are the most basic uh, information that one needs for uh, designing um, policies for decarbonization, decarbonization of the EU building stock. And we also save some metadata, for example, to link uh, each building back to uh, the initial data sets. So uh, the data product is really uh, geared toward uh, enabling um, large-scale applications or comparisons of uh, building across Europe. And so um, this is a visualization of all these uh, um, footprint polygon look like. And um, so in addition to these polygons, there are um, various fields in the data. Um, so the ID of a building, this location, um, the different attributes that we mentioned, so mentionary data and the geometry is uh, encoded as one field. Um, so to, to get to this product, um, we have a, a workflow that starts from identifying uh, available data. So we have two main sources of data. One is um, this open uh, government data sets that I previously mentioned. We have about 70 of them, which uh, can range from country level to sometimes regional level, city level. So different granularities, and we complement this data with uh, OpenStreetMap. So all this data is harmonized in a single database, uh, and we then uh, infer missing attribute values. So for each footprint that we're able to find, sometimes we have uh, values for the three attributes of interest. Sometimes we have only for one, for two. So the, in these steps, we aim to really have complete um, columns for each of these attributes. And then the last step is uh, the release of the data. So I will now go through each of these steps to give you more details on, um, on each of them. So first one is identification of available data. Um, so um, the, the, the data of interest is building footprints. And as I said, we have about 200 million of them. Uh, when we were able to find it from government data, this is the source that we uh, use first because it's more likely to be complete. So we found data for about uh, 180 million buildings and for regions where we don't have data from uh, open government data sets, we uh, use data from OpenStreetMap, which we estimate to add another 20 million buildings. So in this map, you can see that uh, there are quite a few countries where we were able to find complete coverage. So for example, Spain, France, Belgium, uh, Poland, Denmark, Finland, Estonia. Um, there are some large countries where um, the data is incomplete because um, these countries release data at the regional level. Uh, so it's mostly the case of uh, Germany and Italy, but we're able to find many of these individual regions 
that account for about 70 to 80 percent of the building stuff of those countries. But you can also see that for uh, some countries, mostly in southern Europe, we have um, very low data availability um, that comes from OpenStreetMap. So, for example, Greece, uh, Bulgaria, uh, or, or Romania, Portugal. So, um, so all the data that's uh, has been identified was effect effectively accessed because um, also some data sets are um, uh, mentioned in certain open data portal, but can in the end not be accessed. Um, so all the, the, the data that um, that is presented here has been accessed and downloaded, and we are currently in the um, process of, uh, of parsing it. Um, then, in addition to footprints, we're also interested in attributes. So this is a map that shows you a little bit what kind of information attributes add in on top of just having a map of the, the footprint. So you can um, get a better feeling of how different uh, buildings are. So here, for example, um, depending on their height. And so we estimate that we have uh, about a quarter to a half of um, each build um, of uh, one attribute uh for for um so a, a quarter to a half um of each building per attribute um and this offers a large training set for machine machine learning so for example when we have half of the buildings uh, available for height then we just have the other half to predict um which is still a lot but um a machine learning algorithm can um, can learn a, a lot of patterns on uh, so many buildings but um, one thing that we have also uh, identified from previous research is that uh, the number of building itself is not the only thing that's important, but it's also very important to have diversified training set with um, a little bit of local data from everywhere in Europe. Uh, and most attributes come from government data. Uh, we have a little bit of data as well from OpenStreetMap. Um, so 6% of the buildings in OpenStreetMap have type, 3% um, have height of floors that gives a, a rough a, a approximation of height, and 1% have has age. Some additional consideration um, that were important when uh, harmonizing the data. So we looked at licenses um, in order to be able to uh, modify and redistribute uh, the, the data, and also which are the, the purposes that are uh, allowed by these licenses. and we were very happy to find that almost all uh, data sets um, have licenses that authorize this. The open, uh, so the, uh, the, day, the um, license from OpenStreetMap, the Open Data Commons um, Open Database license imposes uh, specific constraints. So we may um, release the database in two parts, uh, one part open government data and one part uh, OpenStreetMap so that users can, uh, depending on what they want to do with the data and whether they are able, they are allowed to do what they want to do with the data can filter. Um, so as I said, the database comes with different granularity, not only in terms of uh, what's the um, special coverage of the whole database, but also um, the way the database is structured. So sometimes there is a dump of the whole region, sometimes they have tiles, uh, sometimes. So the, the files can be break down in, in very different ways. So this actually requires a very agile workflow to, um, to parse all this data. Download can also be very complex. One main reason is that many APIs are not designed for mass downloads and are um, more meant to uh, download on this most specific subset of the data. So uh, we had to be also quite creative with downloads. And um, in terms of identification, um, building data sometimes comes as a single building data set, but sometimes comes a, as a layer of a more complex products with various different names. So um, there were also challenges to actually identify in each region, whether there's actually not anything available or whether it's available with a name that we didn't think of at the beginning. Uh, so after this identification phase, we are parse and harmonize the data. So um, the goal here is to come up with a single format um, with only the subset of relevant attributes that we're interested in and discard all um, unnecessary information. So the data is saved in CSVs with geometries uh, encoded with the well-known text uh, format, which essentially um, enables to turn a geometry object into a string. 
Um, so we keep only the three attributes of interest, height, age, and type. Um, those attributes actually require often harmonization. Um, for example, for the type category, um, there can be sometimes three types or um, 50 types. So we need to um, uh, yeah, harmonize to a certain amount of types in um, yeah, when, when you have more than, uh, than less. And we also keep uh, some extra information. So for example, the ID or the name of the original um, file and yeah, further metadata so that uh, you can trace back original files. Um, the other main step of uh, harmonization was to come up with consistent uh, administrative boundaries. So uh, we uh, generate information about the country, regions, and city where each building is located so that um, buildings can be filtered depending on uh, the interest. Uh, so this matching was done using the database, uh, so the GADM database, the uh, Global Administrative Areas, which um, provides uh, worldwide um, polygons of administrative boundaries at different level of granularity. Um, so the data was saved um, as individual city files to uh, enable to parallelize operation on uh, an higher performance computing infrastructure. And uh, and in the end, we will uh, aggregate again uh, this information uh, and all this data by region so that it's uh, more easy to download. Um, the last step of parsing is to do feature engineering, which is a, a key step for, um, for machine learning. So feature engineering is essentially a step of computing uh, various metrics for, for each building um, that describe uh, information about the building itself or its neighborhood. So for example, and this is a, a, a metric on uh, the convexity of uh, different buildings. Um, so we also save the information on uh, in which kind of building uh, neighborhood the building is located. So with different uh, buffer size that represent different, uh, um, different characterization of what's, what can be a neighborhood, so a small neighborhood or a larger neighborhood. And we also, um, used information uh, from street networks to, for example, uh, locate where the building is in the city. So those are uh, three examples of features that that we um, that, that that we crafted, and there are about 150 of them uh, that that we are able to uh, compute, and um, that we will also uh, aim to release as a as a ancillary data set together with the main data set. Um, so with this data uh, harmonized and um, this feature engineering done, we can then uh, infer missing attributes. So the approach here is to use uh, is to so first we have three uh, prediction problems. So we want to predict heights, age, and type, and we use uh, supervised machine learning. So uh, here a pretty standard approach gradient boosting to uh, to learn a model that um, that learns relationship between one of these target variables and uh, all the different features that we uh, have computed. Uh, and that's, um, so this uh, model can be learned on the training set where we have the features and we have the um, target variable available. The way we train this model is by a special cross-validation. So uh, the, the goal of this is to uh, maximize the generability of the model by, um, uh, um, learning um, uh, the relationship between uh, between these different variables on certain regions, and then trying to predict on another region that is specially um, uh, removed from from these first regions. And then we um, by by this um, the model is not overfitting to a specific region, but is actually trying to learn. Uh, generic information that um, that transfer from one region to another region. So um, here you have an example on this map where we trained um, on these different regions in France, uh, Netherlands, and uh, Italy, and where we predict in London, Berlin, and Germany, so which are um, quite different uh, um, type of, of building stock, but that also still have some, some similarities and. Um, and the model is trying to find these. And then uh, once we have this model trained on these uh, colored uh, 
part of the of the map, then the goal is to do the inference uh, for the gray, um, uh, the gray areas where where we don't have data. So the current results show that uh, it's actually uh, possible to predict re re reasonably well across different countries, um, and that scarce local data improve accuracy. Um, so uh, for building heights, this is where we have. Uh, the best result because this um, was already published as a previous paper. And the goal here is to essentially get the number of floor right. So having a prediction error of plus um, of maximum plus or minus 2.5 uh, meter. And here you have the results um, from the experience that I just showed before when we uh, learned from different countries and tried to predict in Brandenburg. And um, you can see that uh, we achieve uh, about 80% of uh, the prediction within the acceptable range. Um, for age, the, the goal is to get the decade right, which is currently we do a bit less good than this, but uh, we are trying to improve the, the algorithm to, to get to this goal. And, and uh, the type is a, a, is a slightly different problem. So this is not a regression problem with a continuous uh, target, but this is a classification problem. And what's difficult here is that there's a large class imbalance. So most buildings are usually residential, about 85% of them, and very few are of the other types. So the model tends to other over predict residential and struggles to predict the other one. So this is uh, also work in progress to um, improve the performance on the, the types that um, are uh, quite few in the training set. Um, then a, a last step here is to characterize uncertainty. So we want to um, acknowledge explicitly in the database that there are various sources of uncertainty um, in, the, in the data. So one is the measurement uncertainty uh, from the original data, data sets. And this is something that unfortunately cannot be addressed. Um, but uh, there's also the inference uncertainty that comes from our machine learning approach. And this is this will be indicated uh, as an attribute. So what's um, what's uh, what's the the performance that our model was able to do on the on the test set? So where we we were able to to put to uh, have a metric of, of how good we are, and then we will uh, indicate this um, for all the buildings where. We don't know how good we were, but um, at least we have this order of magnitude. Then there is also missing data uh, from OpenStreetMap. And so this will be indicated uh, by, by the source. So for the regions where we have OpenStreetMap data, uh, uh, there will be so there will be a column on whether the data come from OpenStreetMap or government data. And um, for the, uh, the regions where Open Street, the, the data come from OpenStreetMap, it will be clear that made clear that um, uh, this is the percentage of building where th that we, we think we have in this region. Um, so yeah, you can see that uh, here, the, the, the green polygons, for, this is for one, uh, one city, I think in Finland, and the green polygons are government data, and uh, no, the, the red polygons are government data, and the green polygons are open street maps. So um, sometimes some, some buildings are missing. And uh, the last source of Uncertainty is the uh, destruction and construction since the data sets released because all the different data sets have been released at different times. Um, that can sometimes be a decade ago. So the year of release of the database will also be indicated. Um, to quick, quickly um, give some, some discussion points. So the way we will release the data is first. So we aim to make a peer review data paper where we will uh, present the method um, with a scientific approach. Uh, we will make an open database available on the website that can be downloaded by anyone. We also made the code openly available on the repository to enable to reproduce all the specific parts of the work. And tentatively, we're aiming to uh, add some interactive mapping tools to explore the data and also make a Python library uh, based on all our code, but this uh, will depend on our progress. So this data will be uh, uh, useful for all sort of uh, use cases that goes from uh, energy modeling. This is what uh, we ourselves aim to do with the data. Uh, it can be used for um, industrial ecology as on this um, figure uh, that looks at the, the material intensity of buildings, urban morphology, urban climate, all sort of 
different um, <clears throat> use cases where um, where users are interested in making large scale comparisons uh, in Europe, but also being able to uh, zoom in to specific buildings as opposed to uh, what one could do with aggregate statistics. Um, so in terms of outlook, um, there will be opportunity in the future to integrate further data sets in, in uh, released or updated. So in particular, um, there is an EU directive that mandates you know, all uh, EU member states to release their building data. Um, so uh, this is, um, we are expecting that there's going to be more and more uh, data sets available for the countries where um, we have identified that there were currently no government data. Uh, a similar exercise could be undertaken outside of the EU, but if you remember the first map, uh, there were um, also regions where there is actually very little data. So um, it's, yeah, more data needs to become available so that this can be uh, replicated anywhere. And also uh, in this database, we only have three attributes, but many more are needed um, for, for various use cases and they would increase uh, the relevance of the data. So this is an, another important next step. So to conclude, um, large scale harmonized building data are, are really needed to inform you policies. And here we provide such data sets with uh, building geometries and uh, basic attributes. Uh, more than uh, three quarter of all, um, all the uh, EU building stock was identified. And so by harmonizing the data, we provide input for uh, continuum scale analysis. And uh, we use machine learning to help fill missing attribute values which um, perform with a reasonable accuracy. And so, yeah, all this data will be uh, openly available for various applications. Thank you.